Hey everyone, I'm Kelly from Aside of Sweet and I'm coming to you from my photography studio today, aka my living room, so we can talk about a really important subject which is finding the right white balance in camera as you do your photo shoot. We're going to be talking through a bunch of things that you can think about even as far as what you can wear to help your photos white balance be the most accurate possible. If you watched last week's video, I talked a lot about setting white balance while editing in Photoshop and Camera Raw, but really if you do just a little bit of work up front, your photos will look good without all that editing. I'm going to be walking you through a real photo shoot using this kale salad that I just made, and we're going to talk about tips for getting the right white balance in camera to save you some time in the editing studio. Before we jump into the tutorial though, if you're new around here, make sure you hit that subscribe button, and feel free to check out my other photography tutorials. If you're interested in seeing what I'm up to on a daily basis, you can find me on Instagram at Sweet. One of the first things to think about is how the time of day is affecting your shoot. In general, morning light tends to be warmer and afternoon light tends to be cooler. Another important time of day is something that's referred to as golden hour. This is the hour or so right after sunrise and the hour or so right before sunset. As you might suspect from the name, golden hour has super warm, golden light. Although it's really flattering for portrait photography, I actually find that cool light and a slightly cooler white balance looks better when it comes to food. I do the majority of my work and the majority of my shoots with the white balancing camera set to auto. That being said though, there are a few things you can do to help the auto function be even more accurate. One is including some white in your set. The auto white balance is going to be the most accurate if there's actually white for the camera to detect. This doesn't mean that you have to have white in it, but it's going to make things much easier and much more accurate if you shoot on something like a white surface. Or at least have white plates or white props in the photo for the camera. Another thing to consider is what you're wearing. So for example, now is not the time to bring out that new neon green tank top that you just bought. Even things as simple as clothing can cause light reflections in your set and lead to kind of strange imperfections in the way the white balance is set. So I highly recommend picking a neutral color like black or white when you're shooting just to make sure that that doesn't happen. The same goes for artwork or wall colors. You know, all that stuff is super important in how the light is reflected and hits your food. So really ideally white walls, you know, white kind of things surrounding you and no bright colors that are gonna reflect weird spots of light onto your food. Another thing you can do is experiment with the white balance options that come in your camera. When I look at the white balance on my Nikon D750, I have a bunch of different options. I have the auto, which is what this first photo is. And then there is incandescent lights. So this corrects the photo so it's super blue to just overcome the yellow tint that incandescent light adds to the photo. Next up is fluorescent light. So as you can see here, it makes it super purple. And then there's daylight, which I'm shooting with natural light, so I'd say this, this one's gonna be probably the most similar to the image or to the auto white balance. And then there's flash. So flash tends to make the white balance pretty cool, and so this counteracts that by adding a little bit of yellow or warmth to the photo. Cloudy. So also tends to make it a little bit warmer. And then the last option is kind of manually setting your white balance. And this is definitely an advanced technique, and I would say that if you're getting to this point where you're thinking about setting the white balance manually, either you can do a lot of trial and error, or you can stack the deck in your favor and use something called a white balance card. So this is a white balance card. You can buy these on Amazon, they're super cheap, and the nice thing is this one is really portable, so it folds up and you can keep it in your camera bag so you always have it with you, even if you're on location. You just fold it out, and I'll leave a link for this one in the description box below. Basically, this is just a neutral color that the camera's white balance detector can use to set the white balance in camera. So it's different on every camera. I'm sure you can find a tutorial on your camera somewhere on the internet to you know, show you how to set a custom white balance. But in my Nikon, basically, I just have a preset white balance. I hold the white balance card right in front of the frame so that this trigger thing or the crosshairs are in the center. And then I just hit the camera shutter release and it says data acquired and then it's set. So let's see what we've got. So as you can see, it's super easy, really accurate. This is going to be your best friend if you're working with a photography set 
but there isn't a ton of white that the camera can use to set the auto white balance. And that's it for today's video. If you want to know more about setting white balance in post-processing and in Photoshop, check out my last video, which I will link for you in the description box. Um, and of course, if you like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up and of course hit that subscribe button so we can keep in touch. And if you're not already following me on Instagram, you can find me at a side of sweet. Thanks so much for watching and for all your support. I will see you in my next video.